So uh, we are back here from the previous video where we had built this high polygon base here. So we have this sort of back panel that's going to be the basis for um, most of the most of um, most of the um, back of the uh, other background for our game. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, or what we're going to do is, we're going to look at building the uh, low poly version, which is simply just going to be a plane. So it's really as simple as that. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get a plane here, and I'm going to go ahead and set the length and width to 500. If you remember the original plane was 500 by 500 so we can go ahead and do that and I'm going to go ahead and set this to 000 which is the origin of the world here and I'm going to go ahead and press ctrl i to invert the selection and I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to move them back a little oh well yeah so actually what we'll do is um, we'll place this Let's see, what do we have here? So, it looks like we have an issue here, it looks like I've missed something. So what we're going to do is, first of all, let's take all of these that are in the right position and move them forward. There we go. Then what we need to do is we need to take all this, select everything with the exception of this back plane, and let's let's look at pulling this back. I'm not too bothered that this is a little off center here. Let's pull this back about here. Now let's check everything. Let's make sure all the screws are in the right place. So it looks like everything's in the right place. There we go. Yep. Okay. So let's go ahead. And let's select our back plane here. Take this, there we go. And uh, I'm going to give this name um, LP underscore. Let's call this LP underscore back panel. Okay. Now you, you can see that there's this. Um, issue right here where it's going to be curved and um, don't worry about that we can simply fix that in editing I'm not going to go ahead and try and make this uh, perfectly square here in the corner it's, it's just really not going to be helpful to sit there and start tinkering with um, that sort of detail so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and use a unwrap UVW Choose the edit and we're gonna press OK and let's use plane and we're gonna go make sure we're in the right axis here. Yep, so this is the right axis. And this is going to unwrap this on the on um, the right axis. Now we're gonna use that to bake now. We want to go ahead and set up a second UV channel, and this is going to be for the purposes of Unreal Engine 4. We're going to go ahead and choose Move, and this is going to be a light map channel. Now, I actually do have a light map texture, so I'm going to bring this in. So I've gone ahead and uh, brought this in. This is simply um, a um, checker pan that is, um, let's see, I'll show you. Uh, let's see. So let me just open this up and we'll change this to use a, uh, a box here. So what we have here in this is a, um, uh, what looks like a checker pattern. In actual fact, what it is, is, um, it is pixels. So we have 64 by 64 pixels that go along the top and the bottom and this is representing the light map inside Unreal. Now the default um, I believe is 64 by 64 and the fact that we increase that is it would be fine we're just really doubling the uh, pixel resolution. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign this to our back panel. 
to open and I'm going to choose pick texture and we need to bring in that that light map so let's see where that is did we assign this pick texture there we go so this is the uh, light map here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go down to the little icon at the bottom here the little magnet and I'm going to choose snapping I'm going to choose snap by texture and the reason we're doing that is we need to decrease the size here now a good rule of thumb when um, dealing with light maps or at least one that I find tends to work is to have at least two pixels between them and the reason being is that so long as these lines fall um, directly along um, the, what looks like to be this checker inside the UV map then you're not going to have any um, issues with light bleeding however what you can get is is that the pixel um, you may get half a pixel that has some light bleeding information and so by having two pixels um, separation then you're not going to get uh, that light bleed onto a uh, second face so say you had um, multiple faces here and uh, you had them lined up next to each other and the seam was touching each other then you may get some um, weird light bleeding problems so this is just for uv channel 2 um, what we're going to do now is go ahead and press the um, um, rendering and we're going to go to render to texture And under the option where it says projection mapping, we're going to choose enable, we choose pick, and this will bring a list up. And we want to choose the two objects that's in our scene. So this uh, basically represents the panels here and the screws, even though we haven't named them correctly. Okay. Now what we want to do is under the on mapping coordinates, we're going to choose user existing channel. For both of these and we want to make sure we set to light uh, to channel one if we set this to channel two then we would actually be um, baking the uvs in the second channel which is reserved in our particular case for the light mass so we're going to choose one and make sure that's the uh, same for both of them now we're going to go under the add here and we want to add a normal map choose add elements and we're going to start with a low resolution one, so we're just going to go 512. And I'm going to go to the left view here. I'm going to go to cage, as this adds a projection modifier whenever we use the render to texture. And we're going to click this button that says reset. And what we want to do is we want to push this cage out again. So, we, so now you can see that when we reset the cage, it's nice and straight. And then when we push this out, we just want to push this just beyond where the screws are. So we don't want to go too far. Okay. Once we've done that, we can go back to the perspective mode. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a location for this. So I'm going to go to the desktop here. And you see I have the side scroller. I'm going to go ahead. And in here, I'm going to go to new folder, textures. And I'm going to go with sci-fi wall panels, okay. And in this case, I'm going to put underscore NM for normal map. You choose save and press OK. Then we can go ahead and we can choose render and we can choose continue. So you can see that we have these nice uh, perfectly baked normals we have no red area and um that's good um, the red area means that there's been a, a ray mist check so what we can do now is we can go ahead and bump this up to 2048 by 2048 and choose overwrite okay and so what we can do is if i go to the desktop here 
and I can go inside here and I can go to textures, sci-fi and let's just double click this and open this inside um, Photoshop. So let's just give this a moment. So once it's loaded we can actually see the normal. Um, Max as you can see here has a bug where it doesn't really display the normal map um, when that's what you try to bake. Okay so here you can see we have the normal, um, it looks fine. In Unreal, this may have to be flipped in terms of the uh, normals here. That's fine, um, we can do that inside Unreal. Okay, so what we want to do now is um, we're going to go ahead and bake an ambient occlusion. So I'm going to select this, choose delete, I'm going to choose add, and this time I'm going to choose complete. And uh, let's go back over here, textures, like this. Instead of using NM for normal, we're going to go ahead and choose AL for ambient occlusion. Press OK. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a skylight. And I'm going to choose cast shadows. I'm going to press the H key, which will bring up um, this list here, so we can go ahead and choose the low poly objects here. Again, what we're going to do is I'm going to choose a low resolution one. This time, because it's um, an ambient occlusion, I'm going to go ahead and choose 128 as this tends to take a while to bake. So we just want to make sure that this looks fine. So we can see that it looks uh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and choose 2048 and just continue. And well, there is, I'll pause the video and we'll come back once it's done because this can take uh, a few minutes. So you can see we have the uh, ambient occlusion created here and uh, this looks fine. Um, now we can go ahead and create a bunch of other maps, but what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take this, I'm going to go to render, render texture. I actually want to create one more here. Um, I'm going to keep this how it is, uh, but I'm going to change this. I deleted the, the light here and I'm just going to call this CR for color. And let's choose Tiger and we can go ahead and choose Render. And this is going to give us this texture back again, which is uh, what we want. So let's just make sure that that's been outputted properly. We may need to save. The image, yeah, so that's been outputted properly, so that's fine. So we can close this. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna choose hide selection, and we can hide this, and we can take this. I'm gonna press M, assign this over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make a duplicate, copy this, and convert this to as poly. I'll take this, hide selection, and there we go. So the reason I do that is I just like to work on um, a new piece of geometry. So I'll assign the textures, and then if we need to go ahead and uh, rebake any new textures, um, we can just unhide those pieces and, and go ahead and do that. So the, the reason we've done that is uh, I'm going to take this color map right here, and I'm going to open this in Photoshop. And uh, what we're going to do is, you see there's this uh, Donito um, Entertainment and what they have here is a chart with a bunch of colours that we can sample to um, get certain appearances. So you see we have gold, silver, aluminium, iron, copper, so on and so forth. So these are actually PBR or physically based rendering um, colours here. So we're going to copy this. And I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I'm going to press, oops, press Control New. Paste this in here. Okay. And we're going to sample this color. We're going to use that aluminium. So I'm going to go ahead and choose New Layer. And I'm going to drop this in like so. And let's take this. And yeah, that, that should be fine. So this will give us uh, 
the color file you mean inside the inside the um, base color or the albedo color what we can do is if we look at so you see we have metallic and then we have the roughness value so We want this to be quite shiny over here so we're gonna have like maybe something around 0.9 so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna sample this at 0.9 or maybe a little less let's see 0.8 so we'll actually sample this at around 0.8 instead of using those colors and if I go back over here you see I also have this scratch texture I press control V so image adjustments and I'm going to go to hue saturation and remove the saturation here and I'm going to keep pasting these in as we're going to have scratches well actually not this intense so don't worry about that And because we are only working with the albedo color, then we should be fine. So if we if we look at this, so probably the best thing to do here is to invert this. So we actually get the um, black scratches here. Let's do something like this. So if we, yeah, so that looks fine. So we can probably drop this down a little bit. So we get somewhere close to that image. Now I want to duplicate this and hide it. And we're going to take these two and we're going to merge these. And the reason we're doing that is we want to delete uh, a lot of this. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this particular brush. I don't know which one it is, but it looks as if it's going to be fine. So let's just go ahead and remove these center pieces. I only really want scratches on the edges here. So I'm just randomly moving this around. There's no, there's no particular method to this. Just looking at the general areas where I want no scratches to be. I do understand that this is going to destroy the image and really I should have used that mask but I'm fine we duplicated it anyway so I have to worry about that I can always redo this because as I said this is not really supposed to be intended to be an exact tutorial just me sort of working along and uh, hopefully you know you could find or maybe you find whatever I do here helpful and if that's the case, then, you know, don't, don't hesitate. Let me know. Um, leave a comment. You could also subscribe if you like. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, let's see. Okay. Go to blending options and uh, let's see what happens if we cut off some of these bottom values. Maybe some of these top ends. There we go. So just playing around with some of these. Um, some of these values here is going to give us that little scratched or that scratched appearance. And we can go ahead and choose around 0.8 here again. But 
blending options. Let's bring some of that back in. So I'm just going to duplicate that. There we go. So this looks like it gives us a better result just by duplicating them. Let's drop this down a little bit. There we go. So this is going to be the, um, I think this is the metallic value. So metallic. So I'm going to call this. Metallic and uh, let's duplicate this Call this rough And I'm going to invert this And we have those scratches which are A little too tense Let's, um, so that's not going to do it. So we're going to go to console. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image adjustments and let's try playing with the, uh, okay. So what I'll do is instead is I'll sample this. Let's just go through these blending modes. So what I'll do is I'll go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. Let's bring the brightness down a little. So we'll do something like that. I think that'll be fine. Okay. Um hmm. I would like to Color overlay. Yeah, I think that'd be better. Soft light. Looks like it's going to be okay. So all, all I'm doing here is uh, just going through the blending modes. Um, saturation might be fine. I'm going to go with that soft light. Doesn't look like as if it adds a whole lot. Just a little bit. No, it's okay. In fact, I'll just cancel it. So we'll just go with this um, for the uh, roughness. So let's call this rough. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to File, Save As, go with Tiger. Put underscore R for roughness. M for metallic and I'm just going to save this out as a PSD here we go oops file save as PSD so we need to apply these textures and see what they um start to look like so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that so let's first of all take this reset this to be make sure this is in the center and what I'm gonna do is I actually want to move the pivot point and I'm gonna press S to turn on the snapping I'm gonna right click the snap and make sure it's on vertex and set this to be right in the center here. There we go. And let's go to File, Export, Export Selected.
to save and let's see so all the options should be fine let's have a look on the geometry i'm going to turn on smoothing groups um yeah, uncheck this i'm going to go to advanced options automatic um Mm, keep this as centimeters. Uh, FBX format. So what I'm gonna do is I know that the uh, fourteen slash fifteen version was uh, a little buggy. I don't know if they fixed it on twenty sixteen, so I'm just gonna keep it with twenty thirteen here, and press OK. Then what we can do is I can load up Unreal, uh, set up a basic site scrolling game, import this in, and we can see where we're going. Now, we do still need to edit the textures a little, so um, let's go ahead and do that now, actually. So, let's turn this turn this off. Let's see. There we go. And let's turn this off here. And what we need to edit here is we need to add our light Okay, so let's take this. And uh, go to edit, transform, the start. Edit, transform. Okay, we'll use a. So. Okay, it's not letting us do it. So what I'll do is I'll press X. We need to add a color in here. And, and then I'm going to go to edit, transform. And I'm going to choose the start. And we're going to choose something like this. And something like that. There we go. Let's take this. Let's go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Edit, transform, flip vertical, sorry, there we go. And we're gonna place this all the way down here. So it's about yeah, so it's about the same location. So that's about fine. I'm gonna merge these layers. I'll press D, sets to be black. Okay, so this is going to be our emissive color. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go File, New. I'm going to paste this, and I'm going to go to Edit. And um, actually, yeah, no, what we'll do is we'll go to File, Open, and we'll View, List, and we want to go with this color. Press Control C, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new channel. Press Control V. Then what we can do is go File, Save as, Color, yes. And we want to make sure we're on a 32 bit bitmap, which means that we now exploit this with an alpha. Okay. So let's go to Library, let's go to Launch, and we will launch a. We'll launch a um, new game here. So let's go ahead and choose new project. And let's see, we're going to go ahead and choose this. The, <coughs> excuse me. The um, side scrolling game. So let's choose side scroller. And we don't want no start. We want no starter content. And let's call this my side my side scroll again actually we will bring this in with the, the content okay so we can delete the content when we don't want it but um if we need to have uh, placeholders um within the level then at least we can use the the uh content provided so I'm just going to wait for this to finish loading. So it looks like Unreal is just about going to open up here. There we go. So there's a game. Let's go ahead and choose play. 
There we go. So, oops, there we go. Let's go and play. So here's our basic side scrolling game. That's fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go ahead and choose content, right click, choose new folder. It's my side. My side scrolling game and inside here I'm gonna right right click new folder meshes new folder textures new folder so this is just the, this is just the, um, uh, system I like to use uh, it's totally up to you you can order this however you want I'm gonna go in here and choose new folder and I'm gonna call this um, sci-fi wall panels and I'm going to open up this folder right click choose import and I'm gonna go ahead find the side scroller go to the textures side scroller panels and we're gonna import the ambient occlusion the color the M the normal and the R which is open and uh, let's just uh, wait for this to import all those textures now depending on your system you could increase or decrease the resolution of these textures okay so I'm gonna go to meshes and I'm gonna need folder we've got sci-fi panels right click and import and we just need to import our simple plane so let's go ahead and import this now we're going to get some options here and um, we don't want to import the materials i want to create one um, myself i don't want to import the textures because we've already imported them we we can tell it to automatically generate a collision if we want uh, because it's only simple However, we don't want it to generate light map UVs because if you remember correctly in the first video, we had already created them by hand. So with that done, we can go ahead and choose import. And um, there we have our amazing panel. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the material for this. And we'll place this in the scene and um, we'll see how everything begins to look. So let's go ahead and choose um, New folder and let's create a new material this M underscore M for material underscore sci-fi panels okay so let's open this and we're gonna go ahead and choose the textures Let's go to textures, open up here, and we're just going to bring all these in here. So, let's click and drag all these in here. Let's pull this up here. Now, we may need to edit this normal map in just a moment, but we'll have to see. Now, it looks Okay, so we don't need this one here. We actually just needed these two. So we can go ahead and delete this one. The color. Because we need the rough and the uh, metallic. So, so this is the M for the metallic. This is the R. For the roughness we have a slot all the way down here for ambient occlusion so we can put this in over here now there is no base color so what we can do is uh, this is already similar so we can place this over here And let's plug in our normal. Let's see what we get. So now you can see we have uh, 
be a normal here. Now, let's see. So looking at this, um, it looks very shiny. Um, and uh, as you can see, it is pretty close to the chart here, but I want to modify this a little bit. I don't want it to actually be that strong. So instead of going back to changing the materials, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change some of these values instead. So the metalness, what I'm going to do is, or the metallic here, I'm going to multiply that. So I'm going to go with multiply. I'm going to set this to a 1. So you see we have 0 here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose maybe around 0.5. Which brings it down a little bit. Um, maybe we can bring this down a little bit further. Let's try like 0 0.3. 0 0.2 maybe. So 0.2. As you can see here, it gives us still a little bit of reflection. Okay. Not too much. You can see, we can see those scratches uh, appearing on the surface. Now you can go ahead and, and take your time in uh, creating those scratches. And I'll probably do that too. Now, what we also need to do is we need to multiply the alpha channel by a constant one and I'm going to set this to three so this okay and we're going to plug this into the emissive channel and um, okay so we need to let's look which one did we place this in ah okay so we need to go ahead we need to change this file open and I believe it was this one. Yeah, so we need to do this. File, save as. M, let's choose OK. 32 bitmap, yep. So now we can go back over here. And let's right click and we're going to choose, oops. Reimport. And if we go over here, now you can see we have the light on the top. Okay, so at the minute, what we are really doing here is multiplying this by a value. Okay, but we also want to add another multiply. Actually, we don't want to multiply, we actually want to add this. So we're going to go ahead and add this to a constant three vector. And put this in now. What this will do, this will turn it black again. But if we change the color, actually, let's, we need to reverse this. So we plug this in over here, we get the emissive color back. And let's let's see, let's multiply this. Sorry. So now you see we've got a blue light. So by increasing this value, so we can change this to like five or something, or ten. We we'll get a really bright light. Um, but this will be driven based on this color. So I'm going to right click, convert to parameter and call this like intense for intensity. Like color. Okay, now if we break this, let's just go ahead and choose break this. And let's just wait for this to save. 
I just need to add that back and then we can go ahead and add our normal back in so let's just uh, wait for this there we go so Unreal um, decided to complete hit save there sorry so we need to plug this back in and then what we need to do is go ahead and plug our normal value back in there we go so now we have all this back and you can see that the way we've done this the light actually looks as if it's uh, indented in there and uh, looks like it's uh, ready to go now what I also want to do is I want to take this value and uh, I want to use an old trick um, it's using um, it's used in UDK where you would multiply the ambient occlusion by the, the base and you can see here that by doing that it actually just gives us a little bit more depth so if if we just go ahead and um, hold the alt and um, just plug this in back over here so you can see so you see that we have uh, this is how it looks like normally but then when we plug this in once we've multiplied the ambient occlusion you can see the sounds that adds a little bit of depth and uh, just a little bit of color here um, and uh, darkens that down a little bit okay so it looks like uh looks like we we're, we're, we're sort of almost done here um yeah so i mean what we're gonna do is uh, we can go ahead and parameterize most of these so when it comes to creating similar materials we only have to use a uh, a material instance but what i'm going to do is i'm going to save this I'm going to apply this to our mesh and we're going to apply uh, add this into the game and let's just see what this looks like so what I want to do is I want to delete the sky I also want to delete the, the lights here so we don't get anything we get the glow here from the uh, this and from the character so I actually want to take this and um, What I do is I'm going to open this up over here, and you see we have a base color, a metallic, and a roughness. Now the reason the reason it's glowing, I believe, is because this is just higher than one. Um, what I'll do is it's okay. So we'll just leave it. Um, we, we can go ahead and change that the reason it's glowing is because the, this value of the character is uh, just above one but um, that's not a problem we can we can change the material and the character at any point so let's go to meshes let's select this and um, let's go to M underscore so we're going to choose the M underscore sci-fi panels And we can save this. There we go. Now, if we add this into our scene, what we need to do is we need to rotate this 90 degrees. And we can bring this as far close, or as far back as we want. Now, what I'm going to do is um, we'll pull this back over here. And I'm going to duplicate this. And in order to get this to perfectly match with this, I'm going to hold down the V key and click and drag. And what that will do is that will snap to a vertex. So that's just uh, one cool way to work with this. And now we have these panels. Now they actually look as if they're going to be uh, a little too big. But if we go to build, um, we can uh, see what this is going to look like. Now, these panels actually do look too big. Um, what we can do is we can just scale these down. It's not really an issue. Um, if we do that inside the uh, mesh, okay, then uh, we should get somewhere else pretty good. So here's our sci-fi panels. Look pretty good. We have a collision on them, although we don't really need one as... Um, 
we're never really going to touch the back of them unless we unless we did decide to implement something like that so what i do is before we close this video i'm going to double click here and um let's see so not in here let's take these and let's change the scale to like 0.5 okay so let's take the play character and move him move him back a little let's see yeah so 0.5 maybe maybe a little bigger let's go with So we can increase the size of this, so we can always change the size back in max and import that. But uh, what we're going to do is we'll just do it inside a wheel here. I'm just waiting for it to save. There we go. So let's go with like 1.2. Oops, oh, so looks like we scaled the character there, not the actual panel. So there we go. So let's go with like uh, 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Like 0.8. Mm, maybe less. So we just need to play around with these values here. So I'm going to go with like 0 0.6 maybe. 0 0.6. 0.6. Okay, so about 0.6 looks to be fine. Um, what this tells us is that we need to decrease the size in max by uh, about 40%. But that's not a problem. You can always do that in the next video. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, match these up. And for some reason, looks like this one's not. There we go. So let's go ahead and build this one last time. And let's go ahead and choose play. Let's see what we get. So this looks to be about the right size so i mean we can jump here and go above that now we can either limit how much we jump or we can um we can add the, the sort of the rest of the panels on the top here would have a, maybe a curve or something okay so it looks like we have uh, been building on this for a while i'm just waiting for the um light um the uh, light building to complete then uh we will be done so let's just wait for this to complete let's see what it looks like and um, then we'll end the video so it looks like the um lighting has been built here um we are going to pause the video here in just just a minute i do actually want to scale this down because um i want to be able to build the rest of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on um the panel here and then right click sorry on the um, scale now we change this to about 0 0.6 which means that we have to decrease this by um oops not 40 percent let's see no let's try Let's change this to about 70. There we go. 70. No, 60. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna be fine. Let's take this. Let's go to file. 
export, export selected. I think 60 is the right value. Let's check. Go back over here. Right click, choose reimport. No, that's too small. So let's try, um, let's try 80%. So we just need to play around with these values until we find a right one, one that looks fine to us. So let's right click, choose re-import. Okay, so 80% looks to be about the right size here. So I'm just going to go ahead and oops, match these back up. But until then, I would uh, like to thank you for watching. I hope you find... Um, some of these are at least what you've seen so far useful in some way. If this is something you'd like me to continue with um, in building up the rest of this side scrolling game, adding in some puzzles and so on and so forth, then um, please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe and um, I'll see you, uh, see you next time.